hi hope you're all having a very good time so usually uh, when we have plenty of time we think we can relax enjoy the time to the maximum extent but at the end of the day most of the times uh, it goes wasted we end up doing nothing that used to be my personal experience especially during high schools and uh, college days uh, so that's because of problem with plenty so only when we are engaged in some activity when we are really busy with our schedule you know time goes on very efficiently and it passes very conveniently isn't it so anyways i really hope you're having a very good time so we'll have the discussion on the following topics in this current video starting with the types of examination and inspection based on ada classification so as you can see we have various classes or types of inspection and examination given by american dental association which has standardized four main types of examination and inspection so type 1 you can see complete examination using mouth mirror explorer and adequate illumination and also thorough raw intographic survey or radiographic survey and when indicated percussion pulp vitalities trans illumination study models laboratory tests etc and type 2 it is limited examination using mouth mirror explorer adequate illumination and rest of the criteria Type 3 it's inspection using mouth mirror and explorer and adequate illumination most used method in public health surveying make a note of this point type 4 screening using tongue depressor and available illumination so this method identifies individuals in urgent need of treatment but is too unreliable for most public health surveying so this information is given in principles of dental public health by james morse dunning okay now let's move on to the next question gg drills so you can find some literature pertaining to gg drills and also we discussed about their sizes in one of the revision classes just before the exam so as you can see gates leaden drill has a long thin shaft ending in a flame shaped head with a safe tip to guard against perforations the flame head cuts laterally and is used with gentle apically directed pressure The long shaft is designed to break at the neck, the narrowest diameter that lies adjacent to handpiece. So, if the drill binds during use, it will fracture at the neck of the shaft and will extrude from the tooth. The fractured segment is easily removed by grasping the broken shaft with pliers and pulling it out of the tooth. And consider this very very important: a GG drill of appropriate size or any suitable or orifice enlarger is used to remove the palatal shoulder by working from inside to outside with light strokes. And as you know, the functions of GG drills it's used for removing the lingual shoulder during access preparation of anterior teeth and also to enlarge root canal orifices. So when you are trying to remove lingual shoulder, you have to consider the fact that. This orifice enlarger is used to remove the palatal shoulder by working from inside to outside with light strokes which is very very important. Now moving on to the next question I think there was an image on the histologic aspect of some kind of epithelium so we can review some illustrations. So as you can see we have different types of epithelium and this is how a simple cuboidal epithelium appears right? Now let's move on to the next question hemorrhage so what are different types of hemorrhage so as you can see primary reactionary and secondary hemorrhage are three types of hemorrhage primary hemorrhage is hemorrhage occurring immediately as a result of an injury or surgery whereas reactionary hemorrhage is delayed hemorrhage within 24 hours and is usually caused by dislodgement of clot by resuscitation normalization of blood pressure and vasodilation and this reactionary hemorrhage may also result from technical failure such as slippage of a ligature secondary hemorrhage on the other hand is caused by sloughing of the wall of a vessel usually occurring 7 to 14 days after injury and is precipitated by factors such as infection pressure necrosis or even malignancy now moving on to the next question what is the scoop technique see in nucleation we scoop out things also we have a scoop technique while capping the needle of a syringe so assume that this is a platform and you have the cap so without using your two hands to prevent injury we just try to scoop out the cap scoop technique which we usually follow in our clinicals so scoop technique if you observe the literature 
Following removal of the syringe from the patient's mouth, the needle should be recapped immediately. Recapping is the time when health professionals are most likely to be struck with a needle and probably the most dangerous time to be struck for the needle is now contaminated with blood, saliva and debris. Though a variety of techniques and devices for recapping have been suggested, the technique recommended by most state safety and health agencies is termed as scoop technique in which the uncapped needle is slid into the needle sheath lying on the instrument tray or a table. Until a better method is designed the scope technique should be used for recapping a needle right now moving on to the next question staphanase cyst so if you review literature staphanase cyst it is also called as by several names like static bone cyst or lingual mandibular bone cyst latent bone cyst or staphanoid defect etc so this is how it appears in an OPG okay now moving on to the next question heart auscultation so there are different regions where we auscultate different areas of heart as you can see uh, you can review some literature pertaining to the same you can find some image where you can see different areas which can be used for auscultating different areas of heart and also you can find a table with extensive information so do go through it and uh, let me know what the question is in specific we'll uh, update in the description part if necessary okay now moving on to the next question consequences of alcohol misuse so you're all telling about uh, various questions being framed from alcohol so see if you can uh, make out or scoop out some questions from this particular table and also you can see in case of pregnancy there is fetal alcohol syndrome so usually when there is excessive intake of alcohol during pregnancy there will be some effects called fetal alcohol syndrome in children and you can find more information about this in a link which I'll be sharing in the description part of the video which is pertaining to information given in CDC website okay now let's move on to the next question purpose of occlusal bevel in case of inlay in fact we discussed about the angulations and also why do we give a bevel so if you review literature given in Sturdivant so we have a flame shaped fine grid diamond instrument which is used for preparing occlusal bevels the resulting occlusal marginal metal of inlay should be 40 degrees as we discussed prior and the occlusal marginal enamel is 140 degrees enamel. So beveling the occlusal margins in this manner increases the strength of the marginal enamel and helps seal and protect the margins which is very very important. And also we have gingival bevel which is 30 degrees which has the following functions or purposes. Weak enamel is removed and the bevel results in 30 degree metal that is burnishable and also a lap sliding fit is produced at the gingival margin which helps to improve the fit of the casting that is the inlay towards the tooth structure right so these are some of the functions or uses of bevels occlusal bevel as well as gingival bevel consider this very very important and finally Frankel behavior rating scale i'm sure you're all familiar with the same so if you review literature so classifying children's cooperative behavior, Frankel behavior rating scale is one such. So the scale divides observed behavior into four categories, ranging from definitely positive to definitely negative. And you can see rating one, two, three, and four. Okay. So uh, see what the question is in specific and also uh, see into the fact that if this information being provided is useful to answer that particular question, which is asked in exam. Okay. So these are some of the topics which I wanted to highlight in this specific video so as I said I really hope you're having a good time and do drop in as many keywords as possible I'll be reviewing them and I'll be updating them in the coming videos right so wish you all the best love you all and wish you all a great time